All right, another day, another project. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys this one. It's a uh, it's a customer, Derek. Um, he called me uh, to do the project, and it's a little bit dated. You know, it's got. Anyways, I'll, sh I'll just I'll tell you it's it's a C3 Corvette. It's got twinky twinkies on it, Lambo doors, wide body kit, small block 350, and we're gonna take the engine out, uh, take it apart, see if we can get more power out of it make a fuel injection and get the car running again. So it's a cool project. I hope you guys like it and yeah, let's get started. So we need to pull the motor, so I'm going to take the air filter box thing off, cap, spark plug wires, alternator, I think I'm going to take the, I have to take the headers off, and uh, yeah, I'll take the transmission off, and uh, I'm hoping I can get this engine out without taking the hood off, but I don't know, we'll have to see. So anyways, I'll start taking everything off anyways. Alright, so we got the carburetor, distributor, alternator, and headers off. Uh, we need to take the transmission off, uh, put it up in the air and take the transmission off. And then, yeah, we're going to sneak the engine out and uh, get it on the engine stand. So, let's put it up. So I got the drive shaft down, throttled the speedo cable, shift linkage, got the headers out of it. It's actually crazy, you see, it's this is actually a crate engine which is meant to be brand new and look how rusted it is. It's been sitting for so long. When I actually went to turn the crank and do the torque converter bolts, uh, I had to kind of break it loose. So I have a feeling the inside's pretty rusty. But got that, got the starter out. Got that side of the headers out. So now I'm gonna take this cross member out and then drop the transmission. And uh, yeah, pull the transmission out, support the engine between the bulkhead and the back of the block, and then we'll lift it out through the top. Okay, so I got the transmission out of it. I'll put it down now, hook up the engine hoist, and pull the engine up the top. All right, so I got the engine out. I had to take the, the twanky twanky off of it and do it from the side, but anyways, got the engine out. I'll put it on the engine stand and then see what sort of surprises we find inside. I'm really looking forward to changing the color of the engine because the yellow is like, reminds me of a John Deere or a Caterpillar or something. So. I think we'll go something black or maybe red or I don't know, I'll talk to the customer and see what we decide, but it's definitely not staying yellow. Alright, so got the engine on the engine sand in the engine room, obviously. But uh, anyways, we'll get this torn apart and see what surprises are inside. I hope it's okay because it is a brand new crate engine, but it's been sitting for a long time. So let's see what's inside. Perfect. Well, it's got a set of Edelbrock heads, roller walkers, uh, 1.5 ratio you can see still see the assembly grease from when they built it because again this is a crate engine but yeah it looks like it hasn't even been ran so looks okay so far alright so I'll take the intake off 
Jesus, it's glued on there. There we go. It's actually weird. Look at this, like, I don't know, like worms inside the chrome. I don't know what that is. I've never seen anything like that before. But, anyways, interested to see if it's how bad it is inside. There we go. Okay. actually looks pretty good it's not rusted it's obviously roller so usually that's what those little guys are there with this plate this is like a vortex block as we call it back in the day it's got the little guys to keep the roller in place so it doesn't spin unlike a traditional uh, flat tappet which you want the lifter to spin so anyways I'll I'll loosen all the rockers and get the push rods out of it and then take the heads off and see what's next. Alright, so I've got the valve train off and then uh, took all the head bolts out. So now, see the big sort of reveal. See if there's so far we haven't been able to find nothing, but we'll see now. So yeah, everything looks fine. So it's all looking good. So hopefully uh, when we take the bottom end apart and uh, take the crank out of it, you can see actually, mm, yeah. So it probably needs to be surfaced because that's not good so has been sitting for a long time so expected a little bit but I just hope there's not too much damage but once we get the pistons out we'll check the bores and check the crank check the rods the bearings and everything yeah hopefully everything's good actually looks fine so so far the only thing I've been able to find is the block needs to be surfaced but actually you can see inside there is a bit of crap so apparently when they built this crate engine they ran it on an engine dyno so maybe that's just a bit of break in but anyways we'll finish taking it apart all right now we take out the old bump stick I'm interested to see if it has some big old lobes on it, or, I don't know, actually looking right there. Mm, it's got some duration anyways. Mm. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you can see, obviously, the height from the baseline up is the amount of lift that it opens. And if you look at the the length of the or the width of it that's actually the duration so it looks like it has some duration in it and yeah the lift is almost as much as the size of the journal so I don't know I'd be interested to see what cam this is but um anyways now start taking the rods and the pistons out and uh yeah see what's next see what else
so we've got the Caterpillar small block Chevy disassembled. Um, yeah, the bearings don't look too bad. Actually, the main bearings look fine. So it's a bit of wipe in it, but that's kind of a bit normal. The cam bearings down below look okay. They're a bit scratched up, but they're all right. Uh, I'll flip it over now, and I'll show you the top. Whoa. Okay. So, actually, I'll just leave it like that. As you can see, it was ran, and obviously the water over the years is sitting, so we're going to have to get the top surfaced. But the bores look really, really good, so there's nothing wrong with the bores. So we won't have to hone it. I don't think we'll have to hone it or nothing. Uh, probably actually reuse those rings and pistons. Um, but anyways, now I got everything off. There's a bit, you can see actually on number one, it's like a bit of, that's dirt and stuff that got in when it was assembled. But actually doesn't look too bad. So it's just got some, these are just Speed Pro pistons. Uh, look like some flat tops with reliefs. But obviously the whole plan is now um, the rods are nothing great. Uh, those are just press fit rods. But now I think the thing to do is, is actually make a catalog of what I have, like take the crank, the cam number, figure out the, you know, uh, lift, duration, um, figure out what crank in it, you know, is it a stroked engine, is it a small block 350, what heads I have, what CC heads I have with the pistons to find out the combustion chamber, um, and what compression I have, so basically the idea is he wants to make this thing you know have more power is you know he wants to go wild with it as he said so yeah got it disassembled now I need to sit in front of the computer make a list and uh, try to squeeze some power out of the old caterpillar so all right so got the small block Chevy all torn apart now what we're gonna do gonna try to wire wheel as much paint as I can off of it you know wire wheel all the old gaskets and everything and get it cleaned up and ready for the machine shop because uh, we're gonna get the you know the block surface for the heads where we found the rust but I just want to show you really a before and after you know this is what it kind of looks like so it's I mean I don't know I just can't wait to get rid of the yellow so you can just you can see it's just I don't know it's horrible but what the hell I can't remember what the hell I was saying again I ended up taking the hood off because I needed to make room to get to the engine bay but um, yeah, the yellow master and the yellow on the frame there, we're going to get rid of all that. I'm going to take some of the stuff out of the engine bay that doesn't need to be there and, you know, sand it down and paint it and try to make it look nice. So, yeah, I guess I'll get the stripping. I'm going to have to take the, the twanky twankies off of it and I'm going to take that top suspension out there so I can paint that yellow part and just, yeah, get it cleaned up the best I can. It's just... It's just a mess under here, I don't know. And with the way the engine's gonna go back after we build it, which actually, I got the engine uh, stripped down and got the paint off of there, which I'll show you in a little bit. But yeah, I think we just need to take it back, sand it down, paint it, make it look nice, and put everything back together nice, because, I mean, it's gonna have a, a really nice engine in it, so. Yeah, I'll start stripping the engine bay and get that ready and Hopefully, by the time I have that done, we'll have the engine parts, but don't know, I don't know. Hopefully things work out that way. So yeah, I'll get to stripping. All right, so I've been working on the Corvette and I got the whole engine bay stripped. I'll just show you, we took, this is basically all the stuff. Uh, we took the front suspension, the knuckles, the steering shafts and arms, and the springs, the top arms, bottom arms, and yeah, brake lines. Yeah, took everything out. So I have it stripped back now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scotch it and clean it real good. Um, and then we'll uh, pressure wash it. After we pressure wash it, we'll bring it back in and probably scotch it some more. Depends on how good we do on the first time. So, um, But yeah, that's pretty much it. So just to give you a good look of it before it's painted and finished so you can kind of see the transformation but I really can't wait to get rid of this yellow stuff that's horrible and that's pretty much it I had to cut the arches out inside there 
so you can see I cut that out more on that side and then I had to do it on the driver's side too so basically the the wheel was hitting about there so I'll probably make some new ones to put in there make something out of metal or maybe a rubber flap or something yeah what I'll do scotch this all up uh, you know try to get hopefully get the paint to stick to it and uh, I think we're gonna paint it all black I still haven't decided on the engine which actually I'll show you the engine real quick the obviously the engine was yellow before you can see that's back where the, the fly roll goes we didn't bother doing there because uh, it's very difficult to get in there and it's gonna be covered so we brought the whole engine down to bare metal there's a couple parts that were hard to get to like in the freeze plugs and stuff like that but we got most of it so anyways I sprayed it down completely with WD-40 so it won't rust yeah so we'll get the engine to the machine shop to surface it and yeah start scotching and sanding and get this prepped for paint and then the fun part is cleaning all up this stuff and then putting it all back together and making it look as purty as we can make it look so yeah I guess we'll get to it do it do it all right so got the corvette outside and got it on the dolly so we got it all scotched and sanded down the best we could so we pretty much got everywhere i got the loom out of it and put it up there and covered it in a bag yeah so now we're gonna pressure wash it and dry it and see how it comes out and i don't know hopefully we don't have to scotch again but i think we did a good job we did it everywhere down in the wheel wells the bottom of the frame so we took everything out so I guess I'll get to I'll get to pressure washing so round two so we washed the inside the engine bay and a lot of the paint came off so obviously you have high and low spots of paint and it won't look smooth when you paint it so we brought it back in and we sanded it down again so I don't know hopefully it'll work this time I hope all right so we sanded the Corvette down the first time and then we pressure washed it and some of the paint came off so obviously we needed to sand it back down again to make any of the high spots low so that way they don't show up if you know what i mean now, again i'm not an auto body specialist but i have an idea but basically got all the high spots low so sand it all down again pressure washed it again and i think yeah it's all cleaned and we wiped it down and it wiped it with panel wipes so i think it's ready to be painted um, the only thing that we have to do as well is up here on the bulkhead under the window it's actually really bad up there so which I didn't really see the first time so I think we're gonna have to you know sand that down a little bit maybe get a vacuum cleaner wipe it down with panel wipes and paint in there too so yeah uh, just wanted to give you guys again a look of it before it gets painted just to see the transformation you know the difference but yeah so So that's the C3 painted. I think it came out really nice. I hope you guys like it. 
um, I can't wait to start getting the engine built and get the parts here and you know start putting it together I think it's gonna be a really cool car I think once the engines in it and all the different accents it'll really come together and you'll kind of see it now the engine bay is just black so kind of looks boring but once you start getting everything put in there and all the different you know accents it'll really come alive and come together so uh, that's it for this episode I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, like comment subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you next time <music>